Now we look at parallel scan operations on collections of elements. We have seen several operations on collections and how to implement them in parallel so far. We have seen map that applies a given function to each element of the list producing a new list of the same length. We have seen fold and its variant reduce that takes a list of elements and combines all the elements with a given operation. And now we consider scan. Scan operation on ordered collections of elements has aspects of both map and fold. Like map, what we will obtain is another collection. Suppose we have list as a collection of elements containing 1, 3 and 8 in that order. Let's do scan with the initial element 100 and the binary operation of addition. The result is the list that has one element more than the original list. The very first element will always be the initial element that we were given, and each subsequent element is obtained by using the given operation and the corresponding element of the input list. So we start with our initial element, and then to obtain next one, we will just add the first element of the list, because our operation is addition. We will then add the second element of the list, and finally, the last element of our list. Slightly more symbolically, given a list consisting of elements A1, A2 and A3, when we apply scan left with initial element A0 and some binary operation F, the result is the list B0, B1, B2 and B3 that's computed as follows. B0 is just the given initial element. And then B1 is computed by taking B0, combining it using F with A1. Then we take B1, combine it with A2 to obtain B2. And then we take B2, combine it with A3 to obtain B3. Now throughout this seg segment, we will assume that operation F is associative. Even in that case, there exists a dual operation scan right, which is different from scan left. If, for example, we take the same list, 1, 3, 8, and apply scan right with initial element 100 and an associative operation of addition, the result will be the following list. Note that it is the last element of the list that is equal now to the given initial element, and then each previous element is obtained by adding the element at the corresponding position of the input list. Everything we will say today about scan left will also apply to scan right dually. So when we have a list of n elements, then scanning will produce a list of n plus 1 elements, here indexed from 0 to n, such that the first element is given by the initial element, and then subsequent elements are obtained using this equation. So now you can give a sequential definition of scan left. Let's consider scan left whose input is an array and we have then the initial element a0 and binary operation f. The result should be written into the output array out and we will assume that the length of the output array out length is at least length of the input array plus one so that we can fit all the elements that we need to produce. Here's one sequential solution. The first element of the output is A0 itself, and then we compute subsequent elements in a loop. The current value that we are writing is stored in the variable A, and the index is I. So after A0, the first element computed will be F of A, which is initially A0, and then input of 0. That element will be written to out of one. And then we continue in the loop, and you can see that there is one more write than read from the array. Can we make scan left parallel operation? Remember, we are assuming that f is associative. We have a somewhat ambitious goal of coming up with an algorithm that still runs in all log n given infinite parallelism. 
At first, this task seems almost impossible, because the value of the last element in sequence is computed from the previous element, and for every element it looks like the natural way is indeed what we gave in the sequential algorithm. But even if we parallelize the individual applications of f, we would not be able to parallelize the traversal of the array itself, so this would give us still a linear algorithm even with infinite parallelism. So we need to perform computation in a different order. The idea is to give up reusing all intermediate results, and in fact we will do more work and more applications of f than in the simple sequential version. However, this will allow us to improve parallelism and in terms of the parallel running time more than compensate for the fact that we are applying f a few more times than in the sequential algorithm. To get intuition for why we could even do this in parallel, let's try to express scan using map and reduce, for which we have previously seen parallel implementations. Assume that the input is given in the input array i and p, and the boundaries of the segment that we are interested in are given by left and right, the initial element is a0, and the binary operation is f. Then reduce is going to be used in order to simply reduce that segment of the array a, and we can also use map, which can apply an operation on a given array segment, and write the result in the output array. We are going to use a slightly modified variant of map, where the function that determines the mapping is given not only the element a, the value at a given point of the array, but also the index at which this value is stored. Can you implement scan left with an invocation of map and reduce? Here's one solution. This solution follows the definition of scan, so element at position i in the output is the result of reducing the segment of the input array up to that position. Therefore, the resulting array will be obtained using a map over the input array, where this function fi given to, to map is in fact going to reduce the array segment from 0 to i. The invocation of map will fill in the output array with elements starting from 0 and ending and including input length minus 1. We then just need to write the final element of the output array. That final element is computed by taking the element before the final and combining it with the corresponding element of the input array. If map and reduce are implemented in parallel, and they each have log n parallel complexity, then because map is applying all these individual operations in parallel, you can see that the overall depth is going to continue to be log n. In the previous solution, we did not reuse any computation across different elements of the output array. Each element of the output array was computed entirely independently of the other ones. A natural question is whether we could reuse at least some of these computations, even if we are not going to use the sequential computation pattern from before. Now recall that reduce itself proceeds by applying the operations in a tree in order to obtain parallel implementation for associative operation. So the idea is then to save these intermediate results, to save this tree, and make use of it when computing the output collection. The fact that it is tree is also good for making use of these values. To keep our functions simple, we will first assume that the input collection itself is also a tree. This is going to be a different kind of tree compared to the tree that saves the intermediate results. Here are the definitions of our trees. The input collection will be given using tree of this kind, where all the values are stored in leaves, 
and what, what nodes have is just references to left and right subtrees. In contrast, the tree storing intermediate values will have an additional res field even for the internal nodes of the tree. We will do that by having a common res field in the superclass, and this field will then exist not only in the leaves, but also in the nodes. Can you then define reduce res function that transforms our tree values into tree res values by applying a given binary operation? Here's the signature of reduce res. The implementation of reduce res is very simple. Leaves map to leaves with the same value, and nodes invoke the reduction on left and right subtree with the same operation, and then we build the resulting node. The resulting node has these left and right subtrees as components, but it also needs to store the new value. In order to obtain the new value, all we need to do is apply the given binary operation to the results of the left and right subtree. Let's take a simple example. This is a balanced tree that stores four integers, 1, 3, 8, and 50. And if we compute reduce res on this tree, we obtain a new tree that has the values of the corresponding sums if we give plus as the operation. So you can see that the resulting tree has the same shape as the original tree, we just have these additional values. And the root of the overall tree is in fact the value of reduce on our initial collection. Of course we would like to do this computation in parallel, but all we need to do in order to accomplish that is to insert this parallel keyword in front of the two recursive invocations. The resulting function we will call upsweep. This suggests the bottom-up computation that we use in order to obtain the tree of results. Given this tree with results, we would now like to produce the scanned left of our initial collection. For the collection 1, 3, 8, and 50, and the initial element 100, the scan left should be the following list. The computation of scan left, given the result tree, is called downsweep. Downsweep takes an initial element A0, which plays an important role here, and the tree of results, and the binary operation F. Now it will produce a new collection, so slightly bigger tree in the end. We will first produce tree that has the same length as the original one. To understand how downsweep works, the key fact to remember is that A0 is supposed to denote the reduce of all elements that come to the left of the current tree T that we are given. At the very beginning, this is the initial element 100. As we move down the tree, then we get some elements that precede it. So for example, for this subtree here, what we need to take into account is 100, 1, and 3. When we have the leaf, then we simply need to apply operation F to the given element A0 and the element in the leaf. The interesting case is, of course, the case of node. We are going to, again, recursively do downsweep on the left and right subtree. This will give us two new trees, left and right, and then we will combine it. The key question is, what is the initial element that we are passing to these two subtrees? Now, the, what are the things that are to the left of our left subtree here? Well, they're the things that they are left to the entire tree. So we are passing the same element A0. What about the right subtree? Here, we need to take into account both the elements that we are given, A0, but also what happened in the left subtree. Let's see how this works on our example tree. Given that initially a0 is 100, then this value of 100 will be passed to the left subtree. 
This will then be passed to the leaf and we will compute the result, 101. On the other hand, to the right subtree of this subtree, we will be passing the result of combining 100 with the value of the left subtree. So we'll be passing 101 here. Therefore, when we reach to leaf 3, we'll compute 104. Now let's step back and look what happens in the right subtree of the big tree. There, we are going to pass the combination of A0, which is 100, and left.res. And left.res is already stored up front in our result tree. So we did not need to wait for this computation in order to know what 4 is, because this was computed in a separate pass. That means that we'll be passing 104 down here as the initial element. This will become also initial element of the left subtree, so the result will be 112. And for the right subtree, we'll combine this 104 with the result here, so we'll be passing 112 here, and the result will be 162. So we see that we have computed precisely the suffix on, of scan left. And all we need to do is to add this initial element at the very beginning of the tree. Now, this is then the implementation of scan left on trees. We have seen how to compute this tree of result. That was the function up sweep. Then we have seen just now the down sweep function that given the tree of results produces the tree that is just missing the initial element. So all we need to do is prepend that initial element. Can you define prepend? Prepend is just an operation on a binary tree. If we do not worry for the moment about balancing, then for leaf we just create a node that contains a new leaf, namely the element we are prepending. And for the node, we are prepending only in the left subtree, leaving the right subtree as it was. And this completes the definition of scan left, because up sweep and down sweep were parallel, and we have only two of them, and because prepend is just a logarithmic operation if we have approximately balanced tree, we have a good parallel running time. Scan left on trees that we have just presented was formulated to make the code as simple as possible. To make the implementation more efficient, in practice we would not store individual elements in the leaves of the tree, but use chunks of elements represented using arrays, for example. I leave as an exercise to define such scan left on trees whose leaves store arrays. Now we will go further and examine parallel scan that is applied to a collection represented as an array. So we'll have just one big array to start with. Interestingly, even in this case, we will use a tree to store our intermediate results. The tree of intermediate results looks very similar to the tree we had before. You can see that the node stores left and right subtree, as well as the value that we have computed for them. On the other hand, there is a small change in leaf. Because we want to be able to process arrays efficiently, we want to stop when the chunks that we are processing are small enough, and we will represent these chunks using indices from and to. We will not store the actual content of those arrays, we will just store these indices into the big array and pass reference to that array. So we are not storing values at all in the leaf, we are just storing the indication where those values can be found. Given this definition of tree of results for the array, here's then the implementation of up sweep. Up sweep has the base case and the recursive case. In the base case, as usual, is invoked when the segment we are processing is sufficiently small. The boundaries of the segment are given with uh, from and to indices into this input array i and p. Given small enough segment, we are just going to apply reduce sequentially. We will then store the value reduce as well as the indices from and to. 
we will see the implementation of reduce seg1, which for the purpose of this algorithm can be done sequentially. So what do we do in the recursive case? We split the array segment into two, approximately in the middle, then we invoke upsweep on the two smaller segments. We will get the two tree re resulting trees, and then we need to update also the result of our big tree by applying function f. So this computation looks very similar to the original one, it's just that we are starting from array as an input which we implicitly view as a, as a tree. So here's then the reduce segment one implementation that works on array segments, and because we use it here in the base case, we just do have the sequential implementation. Even though this implementation takes a zero the initial element, the way we have in fact invoked it was with input element of the array at the initial element uh, of the segment, and then reducing starting from the subsequent segment. So that has the same effect as having a reduce without the initial element, but taking all the elements between and including from and up to two minus one. Here's the down sweep on the array. It's going to take this tree of results that we just computed. And then we have the case for leaves and for nodes. When we reach the leaf, we are going to do sequential computation as usual. Now all we have are pointers to the array, but we have this input array as well. So we are going to do sequential scan left for this segment between from and to. And we will write the result to the corresponding indices of the output array. Let's see that scan left. You can see that there's no point doing anything if left is not less, less than right. And otherwise we do the usual scan computation implemented sequentially that we have seen before. Now given that scan left segment, we have the implementation of our base case. What about the recursive case? In the recursive case, we have two subtrees, left and right. So we are going to do down sweep for these two subtrees. Here we are invoking ourselves on the left subtree, here on the right subtree. This is all done in parallel. Again, as before, when we are processing the tree of results, the initial element for the left subtree is our own initial element, A0 whereas the initial element for the right subtree is A0 combined with the result of reducing the left subtree. Now that we have seen up sweep and down sweep, we can implement the entire scan left on arrays. We first invoke up sweep on the input array between 0 and input length, then we do the down sweep. Down sweep is going to write the results into the output array. The writing itself is performed in the base case. Let's examine again this scan left segment. You can see that again output is written to the elements that are one more because of this increment here, one more than the input. Because of that, let's now go back to the overall algorithm. We will end up reading all the elements from the input array and writing them shifted by one to the output array. The only thing that remains to do is to prepend this element A0, which in this case, because the indices were set up appropriately, amounts to simply writing A0 to the index 0 of the output array. And this completes the description of the parallel scan on the array.